I'm Sandy Brooks and I live in beautiful Durango, Colorado in a legal tiny home community called Escalante Village. I want to tell you a little bit about Escalante Village. It's a really special place. It was built by a gentleman in Durango and it took him probably two years to get this to the point it is. And it has 24 tiny homes. Uh, seven of them are rentals um, owned by the owner of this property. The rest of us brought homes in, some of them craft made, some of them DIY. The people here are very interesting. I think that we all have the same kind of goal in life. We have an engineer, we have therapists who live here, we have professional people, um, a woodworker who has done a lot for this community, and we all get along very well and respect each other and really enjoy living in this special place. I'd love to show you the village, just come with me. This is the entrance to Escalante Village, and as you notice, we have flower boxes. Some people put flowers, we do have shrubs in them that our owner provided, and everybody gets to choose whatever they want to have. And as you look down the road, it's paved, which is really nice, and we have lots of color in our village. Our owner started out with $500 a month lot rent, and we pay our own utilities, including Wi-Fi, electricity, water, and garbage. Okay, I'd like to show you some of the amenities that we have here at Escalante Village. Come along. This is my, I think, beautiful home. And in back of my house are the storage units. That is an amenity for us. Um, we pay for one if we want to have one or if we need to have one. And most of them, I will say, are full. Um, another amenity is the parking. We have room for two cars in front of each unit. In the winter, we get the roads plowed and we get our spaces um, plowed where our cars are if we get to move them. And I'm hoping that we get a whole lot of snow this winter because we are in Colorado. Our lots are 20 by 40, and that gives us plenty of room to have a really nice deck. And I put a little guard in the back, and my dog has space to play. Thank you to our sponsor, Established Titles. Yes. My lord. Ooh, finally getting the respect I deserve. <laughs> Established Titles is a new fun way to support conservation efforts. Based on the historic Scottish custom, where landlords are referred to as lairds, or lords and ladies in English, Established Titles allows people to buy as little as one square foot of land so they can call themselves a lord or a lady. In return, Established Titles commits to planting a tree with every order. Their goal is to provide a fun way to preserve the picturesque woodlands and biodiversity of Scotland and raise funds to support global afforestation efforts. With your fancy new title, you get dedicated land on a private estate in Scotland with an official certificate complete with a crest and a unique plot number to see the exact location of your land. With this certificate, you could officially change your name to Lord or Lady and get it on things like your credit card and even dating profiles. Established Titles is running a New Year sale. Use code TINYHOUSEXPEDITION to get an additional 10% off. Visit EstablishedTitles.com slash TINYHOUSEXPEDITION to get your fancy on. I'm now walking on the Animus River Trail, which as you can see, is right next to our community and probably our best amenity. We can walk to the theater from here. I can ride my bike downtown. I can ride my bike to the library on this trail and we all use it every single day. It's just wonderful. So I've heard people say that our tiny homes are so close together. Living this far apart, which is probably maybe, it's probably about 15 feet apart, something like that, doesn't bother me an ounce. We all pretty much keep to ourselves. If we want to be alone or if we see somebody outside, we go outside and chat with them. I, it's not noisy at all. I have driven through many 
communities where their houses are much closer than this with windows on both sides and you can see into somebody else's bathroom. I can't see into my neighbor's bathroom. So the fact that we are somewhat close together, I don't think bothers any of us at all. We just all have the same reason, I think, for being in a tiny house. Um, it's a small footprint in this world today. It's economical. It's affordable living. It's, it's easier to be a minimalist than it is to have 10,000 things in your house. I'm a fanatic about keeping my house clean. And when I had a big house, I spent most of my time cleaning my house. And now I spend most of my time outside biking or hiking or talking to the neighbors. And it's just a really wonderful place to be. And now the great part for me is I get to show you my house, which was built by Simplicity in Lyons, Colorado. Can't say enough about those people. They did a great job. And I live here with Zoe, my dog, who has been my great companion, tiny dog in a tiny house. My house is 8 by 32, and it has approximately 275 square feet. And I picked up this house on my 75th birthday. So it um, has great meaning to me. The deck was made by one of the people here in the village. And this summer, I sanded the whole deck and re-stained it, so it was quite a job. And you'll also notice that I have a nice picnic table which at times I can actually lift this and make it into a bench instead of a picnic table so it serves many purposes and it's really great especially for the summertime so I can eat outside and enjoy being out here. I want to show you one thing that I love about this house I call this my basement and basically it's underneath this was a fifth wheel design and instead of just leaving that open they built a garage for me and I have a lot of storage in there my ladders in there and I'm a big Costco fan so I have Costco products in my garage and I also can keep my off-season clothes in there so it really is handy for somebody who has a tiny home because it gives you a lot of space where you can put things inside and you don't have to have it out and last summer I built the little fence in the back with the um, vines on it and I did that because at that point in time didn't have a fence but this summer the owner of the property bought a fence for us and then we gathered together as a committee and we took three days and everybody here helped build the fence in back. Okay I'd love to have you come in and see my house. This is my tiny home, and above you're going to see the bedroom, but we're going to save that for a little bit later. First, I'd like to show you my kitchen. It's a pretty special spot in my house. I have wood countertops, and I do a lot of work on my computer. So when I came here, I sat down in this chair and put my computer up here, and it didn't work. So I went online, and I found a place for my computer that would work really well. I can eat meals here. I also have another one of these chairs that I could put on the side so if there were two of us we could eat at the table we would make good room for that. And I am not a person who loves washing dishes so I have a half dishwasher and sometimes I run it twice a day. It's a great place and down below you'll notice my dog bed. That's Zoe's spot. I have a large sink for a couple of reasons, I guess. One, I give Zoe a bath in my sink and then I clean it up. I have a very large sink for a tiny home. This is my Berkey. It's a water system for tiny homes. When I first moved in, I don't think that the pipes had been used and so the water didn't taste good at all. And so I was very pleased that I had a water filtration system for, for that. Yeah, I decided that I wanted some good cabinetry because this is my forever house. Some people move in for transition. I'm moving in hopefully for many, many years. So I wanted good cabinetry and um, I did, I, I got Lowe's Best. So it's good cabinetry if you want to call it that. Silverware and then I have um, um, the other stuff down here that I use to cook and bake. 
and I do most of my cooking basically in this spot right here. I have a two burner stove and I have a Gen Air. And I actually got this on um, eBay, I think it was, for half price. And I was so excited about it. It's a convection oven. It broils. It cooks. It pops popcorn. It does everything. So one of the mistakes I think I made in this was um, they asked me where I wanted my convection oven. And so I just put my hand up here and said, this would be a great place. Not thinking about the fact that when I open this and I have to take something out, I'm going to burn my hands. <laughs> so I bought a little stool so I can stand up and be there and I can see how it's baking, etc. But I use this so many times a day and I have been doing a lot of baking and I do a lot of cooking. I'm working in a garden this summer and I've been doing a lot of salads and that kind of thing and so I have a lot of spices that I have here on the rack. Knives of course don't go in drawers real well so we hang them up so that they don't um, hurt us when we grab into a drawer and I have no shelves on the wall. I decided that I wanted windows instead of shelves and so I have a lot of drawers and so things like my glasses um, go in a drawer and then the other I have a pantry where I put my dishes, pull out, which is really handy, and my wine glasses. So this whole thing is a pantry with pull out um, drawers, which is really handy and you can really store a lot of stuff. And I put my things in uh, glass bottles. That seems to save space also. So you can really pack a lot of stuff into a small amount of space if you want it. And then I have um, a large refrigerator. It's an LG and it has tons of space. I really love the freezer part because if I bake something I can put it in the freezer and it has three drawers. I love this because every drawer says fish and meat so I'm going to put a little label on there that one says ice cream. <laughs> so I don't feel funny when I put ice cream in my freezer. And underneath because it's the wheel well Zoe has her water and her food and she um, knows exactly where it is. On this side I have more drawer space that I can put things in and again I use these dishes all the time and I came here with about three sets of them and of course I had to give a couple away and I don't have room for any more in my tiny home. This part of um, the kitchen I use as my office and so it goes to about up here and I have all my pencils and kind of um, that kind of stuff in a drawer and then again I have my computer on this on this table. So when my tiny home was finished, um, I showed this at a tiny home show in Denver. So we put a few things in the tiny home and I wanted to bring some of my artwork in. And when this piece was brought in, I looked at it and determined that it would just fit perfectly here. I got this piece at one of those wine and paint it yourself places. I did not paint this but I think I bought it for like $15. <laughs> anyway it's my favorite piece in this in this whole tiny house and it just fits perfectly and so if I want to make a change all I have to do is order something that size and hang it up. And you'll notice upstairs there is a loft. There is no ladder that goes up there because I really don't need it and it can be used for storage. I don't have enough stuff to put up there so I just leave it empty. So I had a great profession. I owned a house in the Cherry Creek Reservoir. It was huge. It was beautiful. It was wonderful. It had a lot of things in it and I just got to a point where I started downsizing and when I downsized to a thousand square foot house that felt too big to me because I wasn't using the whole space. So the tiny homes were out there. I'd seen them. I was curious. And when I decided that I was semi-serious about it, I found Simplicity. And they showed me this model, which I think fits very well for a person my age. So I went back the very next day and said, build me a tiny house. And I have no regrets. We're in the bathroom. I have a splendid washer dryer, um, also known as my dirty clothes basket, because I put my clothes in there and when it gets full, I wash them. 
And then above this, I have um, hangers. And I had asked for something to hang things on after I took them out of the washer. And as it turned out, I'm using it for my closet. And then I didn't have enough room for all my slacks. So I bought another towel hanger and put my slacks on that. And it now works very well for me. I hang my jewelry up here. It just works well. I can see it easily and um, take it off and put it back on. I have um, an IKEA sink. It has a little bit of room in the bottom. And then over here I have my hot water heater. It's a Renai. And on the bottom, which I won't show you, there are two shelves and it holds personal items. And then the shower is, I think, a pretty good size. And I have put some hooks up on the shower and I have some hooks up on the wall to hang my things. So this is my living room and one of the things that I had a difficult time giving up when I was downsizing was artwork. I have some precious pieces of artwork that I enjoy. One of the Columbine, which is Colorado's flower. And then I have a piece of artwork here that I dearly love. The piece of artwork that's in that photo, which I'm not sure you can see, it's Maggie's Gulch up near Silverthorn. And when I first moved in, I bought a couch that fit perfectly in this space, but it was not comfortable. So I gave that to Goodwill. It was an inexpensive couch. And then I bought another couch that had a pull-out bed, and it was more comfortable. And then I decided that I'm pretty much the only person in this house, and so I bought a comfortable chair for me. <laughs> it's a a lazy boy pulls up it's it's wonderfully comfortable and then i have a small chair here if somebody comes to visit with me and somebody can sit at the chair that i have in my kitchen they can sit on the steps so there's tons of room and the one thing that's special about this is um it is a storage space that houses some of my extra groceries and my crafts and it's just a wonderful space that goes underneath my bed and so I don't have to just reach under my bed every time I'm trying to get something out. My two brothers, who are an engineer and an architect, thought that I was probably making a poor decision. <laughs> that tiny home is a fad, that's really not what you want to do. And I would imagine a lot of people get that reaction. My family has now realized that I'm very happy here. In Durango, I'm very happy in my tiny home. And I own my tiny home and I feel comfortable with that because if something would happen to the economy, I can put this tiny home anywhere I want to. So I'm thrilled that I have it. Living tiny for me is about appreciating the things that I have and keeping things that are really special to me. It's about not having things that I don't need. And that's probably the biggest part. I, during the fall and during the spring, you clean up and I have gone to Goodwill so many times because I have more than I need here. And I have space that I've not used, like the loft up above me. There's really not much in there. <laughs> and I've learned that you can live on less. Um, I've probably learned to eat better because my refrigerator is smaller, so I eat what's in the refrigerator. I think that's been a real big thing for me. I've enjoyed cooking more because I buy the groceries that I need for a specific recipe, so I really enjoy that. I've learned that um, it's easier to push yourself to exercise. Last summer I rode my bike 600 miles, and that keeps me in shape. I've learned that it's just a simpler way of living, a secure, simpler way of living. And I think that for me, I had a really high stress job and now I feel very peaceful. I have a drawer down here for Zoe, it has her food and her snacks and that kind of stuff. And then in this drawer, I have a lot of my electronics and my winter hat and a whole bunch of stuff. And then some photos of my family. And there is a 
um, rail up here that I hang on to most of the time to make sure that I don't fall. So this is my bedroom and it's my favorite place I think in this whole tiny home. It is really comfortable. It has that little board above it so I feel like I'm kind of hidden and I sleep really well. I did a beading project and put the beads up against the window and the sun comes in in the morning and I get highlights all over my ceiling which I absolutely think is fun. I have a, a really nice closet here. It holds a bunch. A lot of my coats and stuff are in here right now and I can keep some shoes up here. They did a really nice job with the shelving. It looks really funky. They put the wires in here and then just held up the shelves with the wire. And I use this space, which I can see when I come in the door, to put my personal things, um, pictures of my family. And I have a printer that I keep because I do a lot of work on the computer. And then things that I can put in boxes and bags and everything else on the shelves. So I have a ton of room. Underneath um, is Zoe's bed. And I have a bunch of storage also underneath the bed. A couple things I like about this bedroom, um, besides what I've already told you, I have three windows in this bedroom and they're large. I also have the fan in the living room and so the air circulation up here is wonderful. I haven't yet needed a fan in here. As everyone knows, when you go higher, you get warmer. But um, that hasn't bothered me a bit because I have beautiful windows that are very well constructed and my fan, that keeps me cool. I was 75 when I picked up this tiny home. It was my birthday present. And now I've been here for a couple years, so you can just add that up and say I'm 77. And I would like to encourage people my age to think about this option. We have some people here at the village that are still employed, but getting ready to retire. And they bought a tiny house so that they could have a home base and they can travel. You can just close the door and don't have to worry about a thing. And yet you have a home base to come back to and not one that you have to worry about. And I also think that for me, living in a community like this, I don't feel alone. And I think that there are a lot of home builders that build a home, but you may not know your neighbor, and here you know your neighbors. And I think that that's really helpful to me. I have a bedroom that I can stand up in, and I don't climb a ladder into a loft, so I'm not concerned at all about how old I am and climbing a ladder and it's just easier to take care of. And I feel that I can live here for a long time. Even if something happens to me, I break a leg or something like that, I can be here, I can get to my bed, I can still take care of myself, and that's really important to me. And I would just like to invite people my age or people who are retiring to think about it. And you can choose your own style, you can choose whatever you want, if you want a bathtub, you put a bathtub in a tiny home. If you don't, you don't put a bathtub in a tiny home. If you want a big bed, you put a big bed in. You build it the way you want to. It just doesn't have as much floor space as a big house. Thank you for watching our video and for stopping by Tiny House Expedition. I'm Alexis. And I'm Christian. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And for more tiny home tours and stories, click the videos below. And join us on Instagram for bonus content. Including face-to-face -face conversations with us. <laughs> <laughs> we hope to see you there. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.